Skarmory is an absolute beast competitively. It's nearly always used as the defensive, annoying mon with an iron defense and body press set, or hazards with spikes and stealth rock. But I think it's way more fun to use this thing's natural bulk with its base 140 defense and 80 attack to become an offensive sweeper. It has the ability Weak Armor, which drops its defense by one stage when hit by a physical attack, but then doubles speed. We can also use Swords Dance to double attack stat. And Stab Iron Head, along with Drill Peck, not Brave Bird to not take recoil damage, can hit pretty damn hard. It's got Drill Run for solid coverage, and in general this thing can catch people off guard by just being incredibly fast and doing more damage than you'd expect. Skarmory is one of the most classic examples of a Pokemon that I really love, but also really hate. And that's just because most of the time this thing is used in a boring playstyle, and today it is our goal to switch that up with full offensive Skarm, and we're going to take some names with it. If you're into that kind of thing, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Meowth Garada. And I am going to lead off with the B-Zelf. A-Zelf was busy today, so B had to step in. And at this point, this thing is here for some nice little stealth rock. And also, we have coverage on, like, everything. So, the problem is, Meowth be quick as hell. And, sadly, a knockoff is going to be able to knock us down to our Focus Sash. At least, luckily, knockoff does not work on Focus Sash. It does activate first and then gets out of there. So, we do stay alive to allow us to set up the stealth rock. The problem is, Meowth is fast. And I don't really have a whole lot that wants to switch into this thing. So I kind of figured that uh, Lead Azelf is just going to go ahead and both get his ass knocked off and out. So that is going to finish off Azelf, and that does kind of suck as a lead. I kind of imagined they would probably U-turn, turn one, but uh, they do stay in with a knockoff, and you do in fact hate to see it. Now, the good news is, on the Revenge Switch, Skarmory actually looks pretty nice in this matchup, mostly because we're trying to bait physical attacks on this thing. I feel like they probably wanted to stay in and go for a knockoff which is going to allow us to Swords Dance, and that's exactly what happens. They go for that knockoff, of course get a critical hit, but it does activate that weak armor, drops our defense, but more importantly, is going to now double our speed. So, while we do lose our weakness policy, it is going to allow us to now double our attack as well with that Swords Dance, and while we did take some more damage from that knockoff than I had hoped, we should be in a pretty good spot here to be able to outspeed, and an Iron Head does a whole bunch of damage as long as it's not Focus Sash. Trying for a flinch if it is, but they're actually going to end up switching out here, and they're going to go ahead and bring in the Sinistra. So, this is a weird little green tea fella that is, in fact, pretty physically defensive, but you're going to have a bad time, especially against uh, Skarmory Stab Flying. So, as I go for that Iron Head, it's actually a nice little, little two-hit KO look in there, as it takes an opportunity to take a nice little bite of an apple with the leftovers. But, of course, I can now just outspeed and finish it off with the Drill Pack. They don't have a whole lot of answers uh, to taking the dual stab from Skarmory, so we are fine with that. And down goes the Sinitra as a nice little sack, which is going to open the door now to them to bring in the Garganackle. The freaking big old salt guy looking like a delicious chocolate salty dessert. But I'm feeling like, you know what, I'd actually like some extra salt because uh, we actually go for the Iron Head, and that's just going to straight up knock this thing out. It means it was likely more of a specially defensive Garg, and that is a kind of a sight to see. You don't ordinarily see... Uh, Skarmory just knocking things out in one hit, especially Garg, and that is amazing. So, they're probably confused as hell on the general speed tiers here. They decide to go into the Volcarona, kind of expecting a Terra to bust out here, but a Drill Peck's just gonna straight up knock this thing out, and gets out sped, and Volcarona's like, damn, Skarmory got hands. <laughs> and uh, that is actually really fun. So, here's where it gets interesting. As they bring in the Greninja here, um, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm double speed, I definitely outspeed this thing, and I can just knock it out with a drill pack, and basically Skarmory wins the damn game. Except they have different ideas, considering they actually outspeed, they can then go for a surf, and that is gonna cowabunga my ass back right into the Pokeball, and uh, down goes the Skarmory sweeper we're looking for. Now, they probably should have done that earlier, but to be fair, the speed is confusing when we got the weak armor on the Skarmory. So, we're able to poke a nice little hole in the team with the Skarmory, but now we've got our work cut out for us. Now, I do actually have some other really fun stuff on this team. This is actually going to allow me an opportunity to go into the Jolteon. So, this is not your average Jolteon in that I'm actually running a Flame Orb. That is because instead of Volt Absorb, I'm actually Quick Feed, which is going to be able to double my speed once I get my burn. So, I decided to go into the Jolteon here just because I know that obviously I can take an attack from the Greninja, and it actually is going to bring in a switch into the Meowth Garada. So, 
here's where things are weird. I go for the Calm Mind, and this is actually a max HP, max special attack, modest Jolteon. Because as soon as I get that quick feat, with my speed doubled, I'm still faster than a Flutter main. And as the Meowskirata comes in here, I'm like, okay, I just outspeed, and after that plus one, I kill with an alluring voice. But this thing actually turns out to be faster, and it goes for the Flower Trick. And luckily, since I invest in more bulk on this rather than speed, I'm actually able to take that, which is nice, but it's also just confusing because that means they have, how, I don't know how fast Buddy's looking for his team to be, but now he has he has Scarf, Meowskarada, and a Greninja, so running the double Scarfs on two of the fastest guys, I'm just like, how do you want me to outspeed this shit, man? It, it, it is annoying because if I was max speed Jolteon, I still do outspeed that thing with Scarf, uh, just being with my speed doubled, so... It is unfortunate, it is able to take me out there with one more flower trick, and uh, the double scarfs are confusing and scary. So, at least I was able to knock this thing down into range to where I can finish it off with a nice little bullet punch from the scissor. That's exactly what we're going to do. One way to beat speedy things is just to be have speed in your hands, and priority is real nice. Because as they go into the Greninja here, it's going to take a little bit of that stealth rock chip and a bullet punch while it's not quite looking like it's going to be a two-hit KO. I know also that this thing can't really knock me out. Now that we know that this thing is Scarf, it is going to uh, a little less, little less scary. So I go for another bullet punch just because, you know, while I could switch potentially, it's more in my best interest to just kind of stay in here and bullet punch twice. They go for a surf and actually end up getting another crit. But these claws, these claws are meaty. If you're at a, if you're at the cookout, these are the claws you're looking for, and uh, that's going to finish it off with a nice little extra bullet punch. And that takes care of the speedy ninja frog. And still, at least, maybe I'm confused on what was happening here, but it has to be two choice scarves, right? Am I just dumb? I don't know. But now they're down to two Pokemon left. They do have this Gallade along with the Meowskarada. And I'm like, please, this Gallade might be freaking choice scarf too. Literally anything could be at this point. I go for a bullet punch just to get some chip before we go down. And they do finish me with an Aqua Cutter. And he's getting things rocking sharpness and all of his sharp attacks be doing damage. But I do, however, have a Choice Scarf back left on my end in the form of the Typhlosion. So, as I bring in Typhlosion here, we did just see them go for the Aqua Cutter. But I can definitely outspeed this thing, and all I have to do is really just go for a Flamethrower here. We do move first, and that is going to take care of the Glade. Also, hey, shout out to Game Freak for making Typhlosion look cool with his flames out. Nothing grinds my gears worse than when Typhlosion's just going full sausage with no flames. It's annoying, but we're looking badass. And now the final mon being that Meowskarada, we know it is going to be as fast as freaking God out here, and it is going to be able to move first. However, all I got to do is live a single attack. The knockoff is going to come through. Gives it that extra stab with the dark type, but uh, as it does knock off my nice little fashionable scarf, which is probably freaking on fire, I can then finish it off with a flamethrower, and that's going to be the end of the match there. So Skarmory got to do some really fun stuff. Overall confusing game, but uh, we love ourselves some offensive Skarm, and that was uh, that was a fun one. Now, that's going to bring us into match number two, baby. Alright, so this is actually, it's a super fun game that I think you guys are going to enjoy. It's also against a pretty fun and scary looking team as well. Some unique stuff over there, and some very large threats, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so this time my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Surf and Raichu, as of course I do have the dedicated lead with the Azov. So... Priority here is just to be able to set up the Stealth Rock. I also know that I should be able to take at least one attack from this thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a nice little twirl and somehow summon some rocks from my weird little pixie body. So, that's actually going to allow this thing to go for a turn one Thunder Wave. I don't know what it is about being T-waved on turn one, but it kind of... It kind of makes me mad. I'm just like paralyzed on Azelf here is annoying, and I'm like, well, I could potentially switch here. Not a lot wants to come in here, so I actually decide to stay in and just go for a flamethrower, both to just kind of scout what this thing wants to do, and also get a little bit of chip with a flamethrower. So it turns out they actually end up going for the Volt Switch here. It does reveal that thing is Life Orb, which is good intel to know, but that's gonna bring in the big boy. And Blastoise throughout the years seems to have gotten more and more pissed off now. I almost clicked Energy Ball, and it would have actually been really nice had I not gotten fully parried. But let's just pretend like I clicked Energy Ball anyway, and that para sucks. So, <laughs> at this point, I know that this thing likely goes for the Shell Smash, right? Blastoise, that's what people are doing these days. No one wants to use a passive Blastoise when it has the option to Shell Smash. That's exactly what this thing is going to do. So, this is actually a great opportunity and example to show why this Jolteon can work really well, right? Because, as I bring this thing in, knowing that they're going to Shell Smash, uh, Jolteon, it does need at least one turn to activate its Flame Orb, which is why hard switching this thing in in this situation. As they go for the Shell Smash, it's like, uh-oh, he's going to be faster than me, and I am scared. 
And then Jolteon's like, psych, I'm actually burnt. I get that flame orb to activate, which is probably confusing on the opponent's end because you don't ordinarily see that. But it is gonna now basically give me a nice little built-in choice scarf. And I can even outspeed the Blastoise once it's got the Shell Smash. And then we have the tight matchup with the Thunderbolt to be able to finish it off. So quick, we got the quickest damn feat in the West out here with, uh, with the Jolteon. And that's actually extremely clutch because Shell Smash Blastoise is quite scary. So now they have a nice little revenge switch and they decide to bring in the spicy chicken. So Blaziken does not get one hit KO'd by a Thunderbolt and fast Jolteon does look pretty nice here. So I decided to just go for the Volt switch here and that's gonna allow me an opportunity to try to make a play in going into Typhlosion. The fact that I have the flash fire if they want to go for a fire move is just gonna power up your boy Krakatoa and we're gonna erupt on that ass. However, they actually just go for the close combat, which is a good play. It doesn't quite knock out the sausage, but it is going to do a whole bunch of damage. And of course, now Eruption is not really going to be useful. So being Choice Scarf, I know that I can outspeed this thing if it just has a single speed boost, which is why I'm really hoping it doesn't go for a Protect here. And because uh, if it does, it's going to get a second one and then it is faster. But luckily for me, I do outspeed. They don't Protect. And a Scorching Sands is going to Scorch that bitch right back to the, uh, the freaking the chicken farm. So... That takes care of Blaziken, which is another starter that is quite scary out of the way. And uh, we're feeling pretty solid here. Now, here's the bad news. They do, in fact, have a flying type in the form of the Noivern. And I, of course, they, they know that I'm now locked into the Scorching Sands because I outsped there. So, this Noivern is, is a little bit of a problem. This thing is pretty damn quick. I do want to conserve the Typhlosion as they don't have Stealth Rock up. I can save his my, my fast boy for later. And I decide actually just to go into the Azelf here essentially just as a sack play because I can see what they want to do and then I can bring in a better answer. So they're actually going to end up going for the Terra Normal. Uh, it is pretty normal to see that because this thing is often going to be running with a Boom Burst set and potentially like a Throat Spray and Boom Burst hits real hard, especially if you get that Normal Stab. So they do just go for the Boom Burst that is going to take care of the Azelf, which is kind of fine. That is what we wanted. And uh, at this point, that's mostly fine. Paralyzed Fella probably didn't have a whole lot of value left, and that's now going to allow me a free switch. So this thing being normal type is kind of scary, but I do also know that Quick Feet Jolteon can definitely outspeed here. So as I bring this thing in, I'm looking at it. A Thunderbolt looks like it's actually pretty close to still being a kill because I'm actually modest nature with max special attack. As I go for the Thunderbolt, it does actually just barely hang on, which uh, is sad, and allows them to now go for the Boom Burst. Knocks me down to six, which I do live, but then my burn kills me. So, you know, the Quick Feet give and the Quick Feet take. So, an important thing to note there, and uh, I'm going to preface this, is that the, free the Boom Burst did probably more damage than I would have expected there. Um, because that Jolteon is more invested in like HP rather than fully speed. So I don't know my calcs that well. And as I bring in Scizor here, my main thought process is, okay, I can actually go for a Terra Fire because surely they're going to click Flamethrower here. And that is going to allow the Scizor to have a nice little time being able to go for a Swords Dance and then Bullet Punch is scary. So that's what's going through my head and I'll break it down for you. I put the candles on and then he actually just goes for the Boom Burst on the Steel type. Sadly, I'm now fire type and that actually just straight up kills me in the second that that happened I realized okay actually I did not see throat spray and that means that this thing is definitely choice specs and your boy out here done messed up I lose scissor basically for nothing and that, That's a bad play. I definitely I should have known that that was actually specs damage versus the Jolteon uh, But I got excited there so I waste the Terra and the scissor so I've got some work cut out for me or at least, luckily, I can go back into the Typhlosion on the empty switch and then finish his ass with a nice little Scarf Flamethrower. And that's going to take care of their Noivern and their Terra. So we now have no Terras left on the board, and we're going to try to duke it out like men out here. So on the free switch, they now decide to go into uh, the friggin' Raichu once again, who is going to be slower than Typhlosion. And looking at it, I don't have the greatest answers other than just using up uh, the Hitmon top here. So while the Beyblade is Assault Vest and bulky enough to deal with Thunderbolts, sadly this thing is has the ability to hit me with a Psychic. So I kind of just decide to go into this thing as uh, just to see what they want to do. And they end up going for that Volt Switch. It actually also does a whole bunch of damage to my little dancing ass. And uh, that allows them to switch right into the Rillaboom, which is honestly kind of fine because Raichu Psychics are pretty much more scary here. And him on top doesn't have that much of a role in this match. I'm feeling like the Skarmory in the late game, if I can get a speed boost, is actually going to come in pretty clutch. But they do still have 
three Pokemon left at this point. They have the Rillaboom, they have the Raichu, and there is also a Scizor over there. So as the Rillaboom comes in, it does, of course, activate the friggin' Grassy Seed, which gives him a defense boost. And now this thing's just gliding all over the damn place like he's freaking ice skating on the grass. Uh, which I am actually able to live because Hitmontop is the GOAT. And now I can fire off a nice little uh, little triple axle, which is boosted by Technician and does a whole dick load of damage. Which, uh, it doesn't quite knock it out, and it also thanks to that defense boost. Uh, but it does get it to the point where I'm thinking, hold on. Actually, my win condition is going to be Skarmory being faster than their entire team. So, knowing that is kind of the case, Skarmory actually also has a really good switch in here. Even if I was just any type of Skarmory, because I'm still just naturally really bulky, and Rillaboom does not have much to hit me with. So, I can come in knowing that a Grassy Glide is coming. It does basically no damage, but what it does do is gives me... It breaks my armor, but that's fine, because it gives me the nice little speed boost. And at this point, we are faster than the entire team. So... With the single defense drop, I am kind of vulnerable, and uh, of course, Glassy, Grassy Glide uh, being priority is going to still hit me. It's fine. It gives me another weak armor here, which now makes my speed incredibly fast, but I'm sitting at minus two defense. And as I go for the Swords Dance, I kind of expected them to switch into something uh, like the Raichu there, uh, but at plus two speed, I actually outspeed it knowing that it's just Life Orb. So, as they just go for another Glassy... I always call it Glassy. Grassy Glide. It's like the hardest move for me to freaking pronounce. It does give me another speed boost. I'm max speed, but a minus three defense. So while I have the sweet momentum on my side, obviously a drill pack is going to take care of the gorilla. And now we have two mons left to deal with. So here is the issue. As they go into the scissor here, while this thing you know, doesn't have a good offensive matchup against Skarmory, I'm actually, I have no defense investment and I'm at minus three right now. So I decided, you know, I can probably take one attack this thing wants to throw at me. And I also kind of figured Maybe a drill pack actually kills. It, in fact, does not kill. The Scizor lives it with one HP, pretty much. It's probably like seven, but still. It now goes for the Swords Dance, and I'm thinking, oh shit. With my minus three defensive ass bird here, and that thing at plus two attack, I am not looking great defensively here. So, here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and make the switch out. Now, ordinarily, switching in that situation sucks, because I'm, you know, max speed and you know, full-on attack. But we know that this thing has the bullet punch priority to be able to finish me off or at least do a ton of damage to me. So my safest bet is actually just to go into the Hitmontop as a sack, and that is now going to allow me to go right back into the Skarmory, and now I come, and we're feeling refreshed. I'm talking armor is polished, and I do not any longer have that minus three defense, which is perfect because we know that this thing has to hit me with a bullet punch, and without my defensive drops, I can take at least one of them. And more importantly, it has to touch me on the physical side. That's kind of the main point, is that now with Skarmory's speed uh, effectively doubled, I can not only finish this thing off, but now I'm actually looking real safe against the Raichu matchup, which is uh, kind of the main thing I'm trying to get some late game speed for. Because this guy's on a freaking surfboard, and it's kind of no fair, and he's pretty damn quick. But what he is not quicker than is Skarmory with a weak armor boost, and I also have the coverage with the drill run, which is going to be able to take care of the Raichu. Ordinarily, Skarmory has no way, you know, to touch the freaking electric types, but with the drill run, we just drill run his ass right back to the surfboard shop. So that is going to do it for that one. Uh, honestly, a super fun and close game, and uh, I thought that was just a cool kind of use of Skarmory there. But surprise, we are not done yet because I do have one more bonus battle for you. And this is also another really fun game. Look, this team is fun to use, and uh, I like the threats I got to work with. So, let's go ahead and jump into this one. Alright, so first of all, I want to say, hey, if you guys make it this deep into my videos, I really do appreciate it, honestly. The fact that there's so many people willing to watch me just mess around with random shit for so long is kind of amazing. And you guys are awesome. Go ahead and hit that like button if you have made it this far. And also hit that like button in respect for this Azelf because as I go for the Stealth Rock here on turn one, I do actually outspeed with this thing not having any speed boost. However, I've been messing around a little bit with a different Azelf. I actually have a Life Orb on it this time instead of the Focus Ash, and my ass pays the price because a Bug Buzz does knock me out, and now this thing is sitting at plus one speed and also kind of a scary Yan Mega. But the, you know, the Stealth Rock was pretty important in this matchup. And at this point, I decide to go into the Typhlosion. Now, kind of a risky maneuver, just mostly because this thing probably could be running something like Protect. And after one more speed boost, it does outspeed me, but I'm just feeling like this thing doesn't have any coverage against the Typhlosion. So, as I go for an Eruption there, I kind of expect a switch, except this thing does in fact stay in, and we do roast his ass down to 1 HP, which sucks, 
because now that gives it an opportunity to go for the ancient power. I kind of did not expect that coverage. Throw some freaking fossils at me, and that shit hurts. And obviously now with another speed boost, it's going to be faster than me. So Typhlosion's like, well, damn, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try this again later. As I figured they probably just go for, you know, another ancient power here. I can pretty safely bring in Scizor, not only to take an attack, but then also not worry about how fast Fela is. Because, again, these mo these claws may be speed meaty. Meaty and speedy. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but you get the idea. Moral of the story, a bullet punch out speeds and KOs, and for that reason, I actually expect them to switch out. Reason why is because I go for the U-turn, and it doesn't end up happening. As they stay in, they get some more chip damage off on me, and I kill it with a U-turn, which kind of sucks. I really was just looking for some switch momentum there. It does make sense that they would stay in and not have to come back in and just die on Stealth Rock later, but I figure, hey, it's a perfectly good you know, death fodder sack, but uh, instead they do let me finish it off, and at least a way I can take advantage of this is to go into Jolteon, and again, Jolteon does need that one buffer turn to get that flame orb activated, which switching in on this one does allow it to immediately get that, so they know that I'm going to be quick feet, and that's going to allow them to go into the Ursaluna, so of course, I have pretty much nothing to hit Ursaluna with, other than the fact that Jolteon now Honestly, is pretty damn buffed by Terra. Not having hidden power anymore, now we just have a, a better hidden power in the way of changing my whole entire damn type to ice. And I can put a freaking snowflake on my head while we look ridiculous. It is going to now give us some ground coverage. So I can then just go for a Terra Blast. And the good news is running a modest Jolteon actually is perfect in this scenario because a Timon one actually doesn't kill an Ursaluna there. But since I am max attack or special attack, that does actually grab the kill, and Ursaluna being taken care of is pretty damn solid because Blood Moon is fucking scary, and now there's just blood all over the place. So, that is pretty solid for me. We're now, we got two down at this point, and now this allows a free switch, or at least a, a safe switch, into the Tinkaton here. So, being Ice type, of course, I am in fact afraid of that hammer. This thing is just slinging hammer out here, and I can just go for a Volt Switch here. Right? Instead of Calm Mind, this is actually Volt Switch. It does allow me for some nice little chip, and I know they probably go for the Gigaton Hammer. Which is why I'm feeling like, hey, I can actually just bring right in the freaking Excalibur and try to get that weak armor going. A lot of the situations, you really have to kind of look at the matchup and really see if Skarmory is going to be able to do enough damage to make it worth it to try to start setting up here. So, as I come in on a Gigaton Hammer, I do in fact get critical hitted, which, again, this thing is a freaking crit magnet, which is annoying because... You know, with my natural bulk, I can take that easily, but a crit just does it way bigger chunk than I would like. And also gives us a minus one defense. Now, at least it's looking like this thing probably doesn't have coverage against me. So as I get that speed boost, I feel like I can just go for a swords dance here. And they end up going for a rock slide, which is not going to do a whole lot of damage. But it is going to give me another weak armor boost. So I'm surely faster than their entire team. Plus, I have the coverage with the drill run. I, I swear, no one expects the drill run. Like, again, Skarmory ordinarily doesn't have anything to do to steel types. But... Drill run there comes extremely clutch, and uh, at this point, now they're able to go into Backscalibur. So, Backscalibur in this situation would be real bad if it's working with priority on an Ice Shard. I decide to just roll with it and go for an Iron Head. Turns out they do not go for the Ice Shard. They probably go for a Dragon Dance expecting a misplay or an overprediction, but I just get, keep it steady with a nice little Iron Head, and that actually takes care of it. So, Skarmory out here making a damn difference, taking care of Backscalibur, which is very scary. But sadly, we have this sitting fella who doesn't even have the respect to stand up on the damn battlefield. Freaking King Gambit comes in, and I'm feeling like, okay, surely they go for a sucker punch here and just kill me because they've seen the drill run. So I actually decide to make this safe play and go into the Hitmon top. Sometimes it's hard to leave the sweep behind, but it seems like the smart play is they actually end up going for the freaking Kowtow Cleave. It doesn't even sucker punch there. So I'm like, what is Buddy doing without the priority? For real. But. At least at this point, if we're sure of anything, it is that King Gambit is weak to these hands. Four times weak to fighting, except it actually has a Choppleberry. Allows it to live on like 5 HP, which is kind of insane. And then now can go for an Iron Head, which does kill the Hitmon top. So, while that does suck that that close combat didn't kill there, it is kind of fine. Just because I got enough chip uh, to the point where I'm still feeling comfortable in the matchup. As now I have a decision to make. Now, I decide to go into Scizor, just because... You know, Scizor is safe from freaking Sucker Punch being with a Bullet Punch being able to just outspeed it. And I'm not going to make an overprediction here. I just go right for that Bullet Punch, and it does take out the King Gambit. Nearly knock him on his back like a freaking turtle. Uh, but he does stay up, important to note. Now, with King Gambit gone again, these, a lot of scary Pokemon uh, have been taken care of, and we're feeling pretty good. However, 
the scary guys are not done yet. There is still an Ogre Pond Wellspring and they haven't used their Terra yet. So we can be pretty sure that this thing is gonna go ahead and put on the big mask and that's exactly what's gonna happen here. So the reason why I click U-turn here is just because if this thing wants to go for a Swords Dance and I just bullet punch for just no chip, I am in a very bad spot. So my safest option is to just go for a U-turn here and uh, they do actually go for that Terra, put on the big face, does give it a special defense boost, and they do instead just go for the IV Cudgel. And uh, I do have enough damage on the Scizor to the point where I definitely die to that, and I have been water clubbed like a damn seal out here. <laughs> so at least now, okay, so here's the plan. I have three Mons left, and I'm feeling like, okay, Jolteon can come in here with that special defense boost. It actually still looks like a Thunderbolt probably kills here, and I definitely die to an IV Cudgel. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click the T-Bolt here. I end up probably should have gone for the Volt Switch because as you'll see, that T-Bolt is not quite enough damage and they actually kill me with a Brick Break. But I got this thing down enough to where I do have a win condition still, but I definitely will say that that was a misplay. I should have clicked Volt Switch because then I just sack something off and then I can go right back into Jolteon and then a Thunderbolt kill. So Volt Switch was definitely the optimal play there, I will say. But again, it's fine because I do still know that I have the Scarf Typhlosion in the back that can outspeed and with that amount of chip, a Scorching Sands without the ability to miss is just going to be able to finish it off. So I throw some hot sand at his face and that thing, even though his eyes are closed, it's probably not a fun time to have hot sand in your eyes. So that takes care of the Ogre Pond, and that is effectively going to be the end of the game. So again, I thought that was just a pretty fun match against a very scary team. And uh, thank you guys again very much for watching. For real, I've been having so much fun with these videos lately, and you guys showing interest is just the best part of my day. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.